So before you go through this self-assessment, make sure that you have attempted to answer the questions because that way you're able to correct yourself and then make improvements. If you don't attempt them at all, uh, it's going to be more difficult here. So here's how you can address these problems. So question one, your capital T, lowercase t, that produces a tongue roller since tongue rolling was dominant and lowercase b, lowercase b gives you the attached earlobes. So this is your phenotype, tongue roller with attached earlobes. Question two, what can we determine by these two layouts? Well, the layout on the left hand side this represents unlinked genes, very important for you to be able to distinguish this, especially when it gets to the IB exam. Whereas the layout on the right hand side, this represents linked genes. So even though they both give the same phenotype, so that is tongue roller and free hanging earlobes, the left is unlinked versus the right, which is linked. So if they are linked on the right hand side, they are found on the same pair of chromosomes. But on the left hand side, they're found on different pairs of chromosomes. So if you then move to the gametes at the bottom, on the left-hand side with the unlinked example, you can have the gametes that you can see right there, um, where you can see each gene on separate chromosomes, as opposed to also having some independent assortment going on because it's unlinked. Therefore, there are four possible gametes that you can get. On the right hand side, there are only two possible gametes we can get because these genes are linked, they're on the same chromosome, so no independent assortment would occur. Question three. We're gonna work through question three uh, piece by piece here. So we have this parent on the left hand side and it's undergoing a test cross and a test cross under any circumstances is crossing with a homozygous recessive. And in this case, it's homozygous recessive for both genes. So after recombination for parent one on the left-hand side, we can produce the following gametes. So this is after you have had that chiasma forming and the upper and lowercase b's have swapped places. On the right-hand side, parent two only has one option. Even if you assumed recombination to occur, it's still only one option for what the gametes could be. Once we put these into a Punnett square, and notice that I am using the gametes formed after recombination by parent one, then the recombinant offspring could have been as follows. Notice that I am representing them in the same notation that the IB would have represented them. Question four. This is perhaps the most complex question of these example questions. So the question actually provides you with the recombinant offspring. So the best thing to do when you're working backwards here is to put the offspring directly into a Punnett square. From there, you can see the relationships. So you can see the gamete that they both had in common at the top of the Punnett square, the lowercase a, lowercase b. Notice again, I am maintaining this notation, which I strongly encourage you to be disciplined in doing so. Then on the left-hand side, you can see the gamete from the other parent. So if we continue to work backwards from this, you can produce the following parents. Parent one, it did tell you this was a test cross, so they are homozygous recessive for both of them. Therefore, that is parent one. And parent two would have been produced by the two, or would have produced the two gametes that you saw on the left, we put them together there. But this is not the end of the story. In particular for parent two, this is the situation in terms of producing gametes after recombination. But the question is asking for the parents right at the very beginning. So we have to reverse that recombination. So if we reverse the recombination, this is in fact what we get, what is before recombination. And so that is actually your final answer.
in summary and the shorter version um, of these answers. So I have them summarized here. You can pause the video to take a look. I have explained one, two, and three quite thoroughly already, so I won't go through these in tons of detail. But this one is the one that I just went through in a lot more detail. A test cross resulted in these recombinants. Which of the following was the parental test cross? And so many people make errors on this because they produce the parent as a result of the gametes from recombination, but they don't reverse the recombination. And so that's the bit that's really important. So if you put the offspring into the Punnett square, that's what we can see in blue here, um, then uh, the parents after recombination are what you see in the bottom right hand corner, but you have to reverse them. And so that is how you end up with the parents before the recombination happened. 